Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Each winter, our wildlife biologists take part in a special, unique quail hunt in southeast Oklahoma. Now, let's be honest, many of you are probably thinking, I didn't even know we had quail in southeast Oklahoma. Well, we certainly do. And the annual Timberland Quail Hunt and Survey, as it's called, is helping biologists improve the situation down there. For several years now, we've partnered with members of Quail Forever on this hunt. Our biologists are teamed up with the hunters and record valuable data on the habitat and the birds themselves throughout the day. It's a true win-win for all those involved. Derek, where do you think would be the best place to start? Well, I would say, depending on time of day, what we're looking for, um, early in the morning, they'll be coming off their roost site, uh, which is more of an open grassland, which is what we've got over here. Um, and they'll be feeding and foraging through that uh, till about mid-morning once they hit some loafing cover, uh, which is gonna be more like this stuff over here where we've got blackberries and, and uh, good woody structure for them to get under to stay away from predators and that kind of thing for the day. Anywhere in here where we've got a diversity of, of habitat options for them to be in is a, is a good opportunity for quail to be, be in any of this general area. Um, and that's why we throw the dogs out to see what we can find. Quail hunting in southeast Oklahoma is very steeped in tradition. Uh, we've had uh, historically, you know, fairly high quail populations in the state. Um, here in the last few years, it, it's declined uh, due, to, due to lack of habitat and fragmentation and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, quail hunting in, in southeast Oklahoma is a little different than what most of us are used to in western Oklahoma simply due to uh, tree cover and vegetation types and that type of stuff. Uh, we're going to be doing a couple of things. One, we're going to have uh, Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Biologists with us. They'll take uh, crop samples from the birds, they'll age the birds, they'll uh, get samples of the habitat that the birds are coming from and it'll give them a better idea of how to uh, manage that particular uh, area. At its core, the essence of a quality quail hunt has a lot to do with partnerships. Whether it's between conservation organizations like Quail Forever and the Wildlife Department, a hunter and his dog, or in some special circumstances between a husband and a wife. He's the hunter, but I go out with him every once in a while. I like the camaraderie and watching the dogs work. That usually gets me most of the time is whenever Piper or Jade goes on point. I'm too busy watching them, so when the birds flush, I forget to shoot, so. And Quail Forever members Weldon and Lucinda Gardner are the rare epitome of all three. So this is, this trip would be my second hunt um, on this, the, this WMA for the research hunt. It's very rugged. It is so different. It's a lot harder hiking way out in the west. I think we got a covey right here somewhere. <laughs> they got a covey right there, be ready. Do you have some flush? No, but the dog's saying there's been quail here. Okay. Well, I like the variety, and that's one reason I come down here. I hunted an area near Snyder um, this past week for the first time and it's a lot more, I mean it's in the Wichita mountains so there's a lot of rock and um, I wouldn't hunt it during warm weather for rattlesnakes but it was really cool to get out and hunt the, I mean, Oklahoma mountains, the Wichitas so it was pretty cool running that. A lot of mesquite flats and then 
get up on the sides of the mountain and some grassy areas it was pretty neat and then the last couple years obviously the farther west you've gone north or south has had a lot of birds but and you're talking south is more mesquites and some sandy soil but north for sure is a lot of sandy soil you're talking a lot of sand sage and just is really different each part of the state you hunt yeah if you enjoy different scenery oklahoma definitely has a very diverse habitat to hunt quail in. I mean you go from clear-cut pine timber land to sandy sand hills and sage and mesquite flats. It's very different habitat. Probably one of the most diverse habitats for bob whites in one state that you'll find. Uh, well quail hunters in Oklahoma are pretty lucky because we have a, a, a wide array of public land that, that uh, we have you know, pretty pretty good densities of quail on western Oklahoma is what people tend to think of nowadays for for high densities of quail. Um, you know, wide open grass and brushland type stuff where where bob whites their last strongholds are from Texas up into Kansas. Um, but uh, but then you can hunt eastern Oklahoma where we're at now, and uh, it's more of the traditional pine plantation almost type hunting, and uh, so it's a little different hunting. It's a it's a lot of fun uh, to do it. It's a good experience. Um, to see kind of how hunting, quail hunting was in the, in the southeast um, versus, versus the grassland hunting that we tend to do now. But anytime you can get a clear cut with, um, with a solid edge like this, like we've got here, where you've got timber, clear cut, um, some herbaceous cover, that's what you're looking for down here in southeast Oklahoma. And uh, you know, just, that, just about whenever you get what you think is a two-year-old clear cut, I just dump the dogs out and get after it um, would be my suggestion. Now there's other ways of doing it, but that's what I would do. This is my first time to Southeast Oklahoma. It is beautiful country out here. And on our very first walk through, boy, did we have a journey in front of us. It was a recently logged area. Um, I actually fell the first time and they had warned us, it's not gonna be like Northwest Oklahoma, which is where I have quail hunted before. They said it's a different terrain and I didn't realize how different it was gonna be. So that first field that we went through, um, kind of broke the ice about, okay, this may be tougher than what I was expecting, but different. And that's always a good thing for me is to try something new, try something different. And this has been a wonderful trip because the scenery is just gorgeous down here. You've got mountains, you've got pines, you've got cedars. It's just great. Um, and it's kind of different from where I'm used to, which is Northwest Oklahoma or just flat open plains. I love that because I'm also kind of sightseeing along with it. I know, I missed. And it was perfect. I guess it was too much to handle. That was a bunch of birds for sure. Hunting with a dog? Oh my goodness, it's a blast. Like, well, both of our dogs are our pets. So like we have a more personable relationship with them because since they are our pets, most people have you know, hunting dogs, they're just in their kennel or whatever, and they're for specifically hunting. So, um, we like when we're getting together, getting everything ready, going to go hunting, they know, and it's just, they're excited or whatever. And so it just, it makes the fun, the hunt more fun, um, cause they're all excited about it. And then letting them work and just, you know, point a, point of covey or a bird. And then the, the thing about, with hunting with dogs is you want to shoot a quail to reward them. Like having a dead bird on the ground is their reward. So when you're a bad shot, it's kind of disappointing because you don't get to reward your dog.
Uh, well, this is a good opportunity to hunt a different habitat than we're usually uh, hunting. We do a lot of quail hunting in western and northwestern Oklahoma. So we thought we'd come out and uh, give the wildlife department a little help with the upland uh, timberland, actually. Quail count and covey flush looking at uh, what kind of habitat that the birds are using up here in these areas. The local technicians have taken us to some of the areas that they've worked in the past year, disc turning the grounds. Uh, it allows the forbs and all to grow. It's food source for the quail. And uh, we're finding birds there in these areas that they're working, which is a fantastic thing. In, in this part of Oklahoma, people are, they're, they can't believe that there's quail down here, but there are. People inquire what we're doing down here, and when we tell them that we're here to hunt quail, they actually say, there's quail in this part of Oklahoma? And we tell them, yes, we're finding good, good counts, nice, healthy coveys, and uh, it's a little bit tough hunting. They don't give you much chance at a shot, but it's fun anyway, just to get out and see the dogs work. <laughs> All right, so we got the crop pulled out there, and we're gonna let Kyle examine it for for different seeds that they've been eating. So when we look at a quail crop, we're analyzing kind of what it's been eating. And uh, in this particular bird, there's a lot of green vegetation, which isn't uncommon for this time of year, especially in the winter time. Uh, there's also a lot of Lespedeza seed in here. That seems to be the, the two most common components within this crop. I'm sure there's a lot of other seeds in here, but Typically, a lot of seeds are only a millimeter or less in size, and you can't really identify those uh, until you look at them under a microscope. And generally, as we go later in the season, food quality tends to go down, so you might wind up with a lot of lower quality seeds late in the season. And uh, so we're kind of looking with, with what we've been doing to, to promote seeds that, that are good for a longer period of time um, and more available. Uh, with some of the work that we've been doing. So this is the first bird we harvested this hunt. Uh, it's a juvenile male. Uh, the males are usually a, a, a white color on, on, a, on their heads and that's how you tell the difference between male and female. Um, and this one is a juvenile because the greater uh, primaries right here are buffy tipped at the end. Um, and that indicates that that was hatched this year. And depending on the molt phase of these primary feathers here, um, you, can, you can age aged the quail up to 150 days and this one's already completed its molt um, so it's greater than 150 days old which indicates it was earlier in the, in the uh, breeding season than, uh, than a late hatch like August or, or September or something like that. Down here in southeast Oklahoma it's uh, nice to go along with hunters and see where exactly they're harvesting birds, what they're harvesting it out of vegetation wise and uh, what we can do to um, uh, create better bird habitat down here. Uh, with with more frequent disturbance. We started this um, whenever Quail Forever purchased a, a disc and a mower for, for this WMA. And uh, so we, we do this hunt to to see if what we're what we're producing um, habitat wise is, is is benefiting these birds and and uh, you know we try to get as many as we can out of out of stuff that we've treated, whether it's been disc or mowed or, or whatever. When I think of quail hunting, I'll be the first to tell you I did not realize there were quail down in southeast Oklahoma. I knew it was beautiful down here, but this trip was twofold for me. First off, I'm going quail hunting in southeast Oklahoma instead of northwest Oklahoma. And secondly, it's so beautiful. And I would just encourage you, think outside the box. Say yes to that random adventure that you're thinking, I don't know about that, would that be fun? I said yes to this and I'm so glad I did because it's opened my eyes to a whole new part of Oklahoma that I had not seen before, always wanted to. And there's covey down here. There's, there's co coveys of quail down here. So it just shows you that if you just kind of go outside of your comfort zone, a lot of times it's better than you might realize. The Timberland Quail Hunt and Survey may not have produced many birds in the bag, but the research data it yielded for our biologist far outweighs a full day's limit of birds. The future of the Bob White Quail in Southeast Oklahoma is bright, thanks in part to the great relationship that we have with Quail Forever.
Quail Forever actually started back in 2005 by Pheasants Forever and um, just because they recognized the need to do something about quail populations because they were plummeting at that time. And, and what's really exciting for me is today to see how much progress, how, many, how much habitat work we've done and all of the different things that we've done since we started that chapter back in 2005. And now we have 13 chapters here in Oklahoma and still growing. And to see that snowball effect of chapters piling in with more habitat work and youth and getting all that kind of stuff done um, is really, really rewarding. We've put in money, a lot of burn equipment across Oklahoma, you know, to the different areas in Northwest, to Southwest, Northeast. Um, so being able to put prescribed fire on the, you know, on the ground is extremely important for habitat management. So we've done a lot of that and not just my chapter but a lot of the chapters have put in have invested in in our PBAs. Then of course down here in the southeast uh, where we've been doing things the last couple of days here uh, it's just been rewarding to see you know people starting to pay attention again uh, to quail management. I mean that's the most important thing is the awareness factor. You know if there's something that you want to do uh, you know as far as quail and uh, other upland species on your property it's going to be just leave them something, you know? Think about what you're doing, land management practices. There's ways to help you keep your production goals and yet really do beneficial things for wildlife. So I'd encourage you to check that out if you're interested. If you're a land manager or own property in timber country, here's more from our biologists on how you can improve your habitat for quail. My name is Kyle Johnson and I'm down here in southeastern Oklahoma with Dakota Christian, the biologist of the Three Rivers Wildlife Management Area. Dakota, each year many Oklahoma landowners contact us and ask us questions on how they can begin to see more quail on their property or if they already have quail, have more quail on their property. Now many of the landowners that we visit, in East, especially in eastern Oklahoma, have dense forest on their property. Uh, and on the Three Rivers Wildlife Management Area, since it's so densely forested, my question is, how do you seem to have good numbers of quail down here, even with all these trees? Well, the answer to that is through thinning or clear cutting and removing some of the trees to open up the forest canopy. The enclosed canopy tree forests down here have little to no sunlight that reaches the ground. So areas like that aren't suitable habitat for quail. They provide a little bit of cover, but uh, other than that, they're just, they're just not good for them. So uh, down here on this WMA in particular, uh, the timber company that owns the property, they clear cut around 15 to 20,000 acres and thin each year to open up forest canopy. Do you have an easy approach for landowners if they're interested in maybe determining if their large stand of trees is too dense for quail? Yeah, a uh, landowner, if they want to find out if the forest on their property is, has too much of a closed canopy, the best thing to do is to walk through your property, the forested area in the summertime, and if you can, all you can see is le dead leaf litter on the ground, then obviously the canopy's too closed, so you would want to open some of that up if you're trying to get more birds on your property. So a good example is this stand behind us is pretty dense, there's very little sunlight coming down and all I can see on the ground is pretty much just leaf litter just like this right here. Very little grass, a little bit, but not much. Very, very few forbs at all. If they want more birds on their property, removing 60 to 70 percent of the trees to open up the canopy is even better, but uh, like I said, it depends on the goal and what they're wanting to do with the property or the timber. If they want to just, they want to cut 50-50 leave 50% trees and cut 50% of them, that's, research has proven that that's also a great practice. So 50-50 is kind of the minimum, and then if they want even more quail than that, 60 to 70% is even better. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, if they decide they want to leave some trees standing, are there some trees that are better left standing for wildlife than others? And on the flip side, are there some trees that they're okay to remove? Absolutely. If as far as managing for quail or any other wildlife, you wanna you wanna leave your fruit or acorn bearing trees such as oaks and persimmons, uh, pecans, stuff like that, 
and trees that are less desirable that you would want to remove are elms, hickories, locusts, or eastern red cedars. Well, Dakota, I really appreciate your time today and all the great advice you've given on managing forests, especially dense forests for bobwhite quail. Uh, and I really appreciate you joining us today too. Uh, if uh, you're interested in improving your property for wildlife, including quail, we'd really like to know about it. All you have to do is get in touch with one of the private lands biologists in uh, your region of the state. My name is Dakota Christian. I'm the wildlife biologist over the Three Rivers and Honobi Creek WMAs here in southeast Oklahoma. Uh, just briefly describe Three Rivers WMA. It's one of the largest WMAs in the state, uh, a little over 203,000 acres. Uh, it's privately owned by Warehouser, which is a timber company here in southeast Oklahoma. Uh, very diverse habitat in this part of the state. It's man This WMA is managed for uh, loblolly pine timber harvest, so we have everything from barren clear cuts and every age class pine tree all the way to mature pines. A lot of hardwoods, a lot of streams and rivers. Uh, most people come to Three Rivers for the whitetail deer hunting, which is excellent here. Uh, but there's also a lot of good quail hunting. We have good quail numbers at the moment. The last few years have been excellent. Good, good turkey hunting for eastern wild turkey here and uh, an abundance of small game such as squirrels and rabbits. Some folks enjoy coming down here for the fishing in southeast Oklahoma. Uh, of course everybody knows about the lower Mountain Fork River but most people don't know about the Glover River which runs through the Three Rivers WMA and the Washita WMA. Glover River offers excellent smallmouth bass and largemouth bass and sunfish fishing. Uh, and it's one of the only free-flowing rivers in the country. So I'd like to encourage anybody that's wanting to take a trip out this year, uh, come down and experience southeast Oklahoma. Three Rivers and Honobie Creek Wildlife Management Areas offer a lot to look at and a lot to do. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Quail hunting in southeast Oklahoma. Not only does it exist, but its future is bright, thanks in part to conservation organizations like Quail Forever. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead and we'll see you right back here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.